Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Europe briefing that's been recorded. Uh, the original live version didn't record well, so we're recording it again. So just to note at the beginning, um, you can find the slides as well as this video using the URLs at the top. And because we have a couple of these decks online and in YouTube, uh, you need to make sure you're referring to the right version. So the right version is here um, with the pink highlights that you'll see uh, throughout this briefing. Okay, so this briefing uh, was originally presented in March 3rd for prospective Europe students who are starting their projects in August uh, 2021. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep the slides over here in the non-presentation mode because it's big enough and also because we need to switch between different websites. So um, without further ado, we'll go ahead. So what is Europe? Europe is basically an opportunity for undergraduates in the School of Computing to have a chance to work with professors um, in the school uh, on research, independent research projects. And this is a really key uh, piece of information because uh, we don't really have a lot of these opportunities worldwide for undergraduates to get started with doing research, but uh, School of Computing is one of these exceptions. And in fact, a lot of schools in Singapore have similar types of attachments. So um, it's a really good chance for undergraduates, especially those of you who might be interested in graduate school uh, or a doctoral degree at some point to consider during a year off uh, because it's uh, the first step towards uh, that type of uh, career path. Um, so in doing research, it's really just research in the sense that it's not like a codified homework assignment, things do fail, things need to be formulated properly. And typically there are these types of uh, parts of a Europe, okay? So just like a PhD student, you have to first start off with a problem area that you, maybe your professor gives you, but then come up with a problem statement. What is it exactly that you're trying to study, okay? And after you've done that uh, studying of this area, um, and you put together a literature survey, you know what the state of the art is in this area, you have to come up with an actual problem statement, okay? Because uh, coming up with the formal definition of what's uh, coming into the problem, what's expected output for the problem, is actually a very hard problem to, to formulate. It's basically taking something and making it into a homework assignment uh, that's uh, solvable. Okay, then you study other approaches to this problem and you uh, finish a literature survey and oftentimes uh, to come up with very good ideas of your own about how to solve the problem, not only do you do a literature survey, but you attend other people's uh, research seminars so that you can get a better sense of what other tangential areas of computer science and information systems might be relevant to solving your problem. Okay. Now, after this comes the very important part of coming up with your own idea, your own implementation, or your own proof about how to solve the problem. That's the crux of the work, and this happens uh, over a very long period of time. Uh, it could take several months or even uh, more than a year, but of course, Europe is only for a year. And uh, probably the most critical one that people um, often under anticipate is the need for being able to communicate these very well. You have to prepare a presentation, prepare your uh, dissertation in order to communicate that to your examiner. Okay, so this is the Europe briefing. Europe uh, stands for uh, well, Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. It is coded as a 3000 level module for all of uh, the School of Computing. And there are certain prerequisites. The prerequisites are pretty simple. It's basically because we want to make sure that uh, you're having this chance to do Europe as an enrichment activity, okay? It's not meant to be a standard module where you have to do coursework, et cetera. It's really only for our uh, students who are doing very well already and want to find a way to enhance their career at SOC, okay? For these reasons, the, um, the prerequisites are mostly about how well you're doing in your other schoolwork in SOC and in your major in general. 
We need to make sure that you've completed your foundation. So you've passed about 60 MCs worth of uh, work by the time you apply. Maybe um, you know, you're in your second semester of uh, year uh, two. Okay. Uh, in certain cases, we'll see students who have uh, a poly background, who have uh, completed enough exemptions so that they're ready to start year up a little earlier than that. Okay. And that you must have at least a minimum CAP of about 3.8. Okay. Why do we have this? Again, because we want to make sure your fundamentals from your previous studies in CS and IS are strong. Okay, and that we know that the coursework that you're going to take in your second or third or uh, beginning of fourth year has been done very well. Okay, that it, it will be done very well because your CAP is basically an indicator of how well you might be doing in the future. Okay, so this leads us to the last part of needing some type of approval from the CS or IS department. That is something very simple. Basically, we um, just check your transcript, check with um, the professor that you decided to do the year up with and um, check off all the boxes. If you don't quite meet these prerequisites, you can still apply. We'll of course review your application. And if uh, we decide that you're uh, ready to go, then we'll approve it. Okay, now I know certain people come in a little earlier, maybe they don't quite make these prerequisites and their uh, records are weak. Um, so there might be cases in which you're rejected in one round. Please don't take that as the end all, you know, uh, meaning that perhaps in the next semester, once you've solidified how many MCs you've got or you've improved your CAP, then please reapply. Now the timelines for the program are very simple. Basically, there's uh, one particular uh, assessment per semester for your op because it's a whole year activity. Okay, so in the first semester, we have our continuous ass assessment, basically during week 12. So uh, maybe those people who signed up for your op uh, just last semester, um, coming to week 12 in a, a couple weeks' time, they will have to submit their continuous assessment report. Okay, so this happens around week 12 and then during reading week we uh, you will have to actually approach your evaluator and uh, give a presentation. Okay, so it's usually done with the supervisor but doesn't need to necessarily be there. Uh, so the most important one is the evaluator needs to know what's going on, uh, because hopefully you've been in touch with your supervisor the entire time already. Okay. The other part is, of course, then the final assessment that happens in the second semester. So all of these rest of the parts come in the second semester half. Okay, so again in week 12, so uh, those of the students who were attending this briefing last year, maybe they already took up the Europe and now they're getting ready to defend. Again, in week 12, uh, they'll have to submit their final report. And then uh, again, just like in the uh, CA, they'll have to make a presentation to their examiner in week 12. And then after that, uh, after uh, exam weeks, etc., you'll have to actually send the final e-copy of your report as well as the feedback about how well your supervision went with uh, your advisor. Okay, so those two things are the last parts. Okay, so you might be asking, how do we get your op assessed? It's actually very, very simple. It's pretty much just that 30% uh, is due to the first semester and the second half is the remaining 70%, okay? And then things, between your evaluator that's assigned to you and your supervisor are always evenly split. Okay, so half of it goes to your supervisor and half of it goes to your main evaluator. The rubrics that we use for understanding what to grade for varies a little bit per semester. At the beginning in the CA, we we're really looking for understanding the problem. So uh, more work here to make sure that um, you're starting to formulate the problem. You see a, a bit of the literature and you're starting to come up with ideas to improve or solve the problem. And then in the second half, of course, we're looking more for the deliverables. Okay, that's, uh, of course, understanding of the problem still remains a core part of uh, what you need to do but we really want to see how well you've extended the knowledge from uh, the particular area that you're studying.
Okay, and just a caveat at the bottom here, if the supervisor and evaluator both agree, and usually this is the case 95% of the Europe's that we see, um, then you're allowed to continue uh, CP free 209 into the next semester. Okay, and the way it works is that, like it says over here, uh, during the first CA semester, you're going to receive an IP in progress grade on your transcript. By the time you finish defending your Europe uh, at the end of the second semester, both the IP grade and your semester two grade will change to the uh, final grade that you have for your um, entire Europe. So there's no way to get two different grades out of Europe um, after the entire year. Okay, so how does it work practically? Well, it's uh, March 8th, uh, a couple of days from now, the Europe applications will officially open. So you can just uh, click on this uh, uh, slide here to go to the Europe form. So uh, we're just going to open this up. Okay, and it'll go to a Microsoft Forms. You just need to fill this out, okay, with your information about your student number, contact number, and which program you are in. Okay, if you're a USP scholar, you can use it to replace some of your independent study modules. Okay, so that's specific to them. Um, and if you uh, can fill out some information about past research or independent study or awards that you've had, okay, that can be helpful. Uh, it's certainly not required. And uh, similarly, the number of modular credits that you've passed or are currently enrolled for and your CAP. Those are for the requirements that you've seen earlier. And the other thing that you'll need to do is uh, give us your unofficial transcript, uh, which you can obtain from the registrar. Okay, so once you submit the application, um, you also need to know which project you're taking, which supervisor you're going to work with, and you'll be informed by email once this form is automated and sent to me, and then we will uh, do the due review to approve your process. Okay, now we do have a closing date for your office, so we're giving you pretty much until the end of the semester to decide who you're going doing your year up with. But it's important to note that even if you don't meet this date, it's okay. You can uh, continue to apply all the way until August of uh, the first day of the semester in um, 21, okay, for the next fall semester, okay? But because Europe is actually a year long program, we would advise that you start doing your Europe as soon as possible. Some Europe students like to actually start during SEM2 now, okay, after they've uh, gotten their application accepted. <clears throat> okay, great. So I understand the Europe process. How do I go about finding projects? Well, you need to do your homework <clears throat> and you need to take a little bit of uh, an, uh, initiative here, okay? So what you'll need to do is approach the faculty and um, there are a couple ways to do it, but the most easy one is to use the facility that uh, a faculty have to contribute to, which is the project administration site that's part of the MySOC website. <clears throat> okay, so I'll open this link too. Okay, so um, in this uh, link here, you can see uh, your projects. So for example, the ones from semester two that are being offered are all right down here. We have uh, projects in games. We have projects in machine learning, we have projects in cybersecurity, uh, and we have projects in algorithms, okay? The, well, it really depends on the supervisor. And what I would like to uh, try to impress upon you is it's very helpful to go through the Europe website, okay? Uh, and uh, try to look through not only this year's, <clears throat> but other past semesters as well, okay? Um, and what you're trying to do is identify some keywords or titles or uh, descriptions of uh, projects that you find interesting, okay? Note down um, the particular professor that is uh, uh, taking 
these uh, projects as the proposer. For example, this is Anand Bujan's project. So he works a lot on HCI as well as so mostly on games. Okay, so um, you might want to look through all of his other projects from different years. Okay. Now, separately, uh, we've talked about Europe projects, but the Europe projects are actually not compulsory for staff to uh, propose. The ones that are actually uh, compulsory are the FYP projects. For this reason, it's also really, really important and crucial to browse the FYP projects as well. You'll see here there's um, actually hundreds of projects. Uh, here, I think we have about 200, yeah, 220 projects or so. Now, some of the FYP projects are not research related. You should be able to get a sense for whether they're research related by reading the description, the abstract that the, um, the professor has put online. Okay, but again, here the, the core idea is that you browse the projects. If you find something exactly fitting your interests, great. Okay, then uh, do talk to the professor before bidding. But uh, in case you don't, you want to try to find projects nearby that might be of interest and then consider uh, approaching that professor and discussing more about your interest and seeing whether there's a good match for a project that could be constructed out of your shared interests. It's not always the case that the professor has a, um, a specific requirement to do that particular project. Okay. So that's why I say uh, over here, you should talk with any faculty whose areas of interest to you. So find their homepage, uh, look through their website, um, and, and try to figure out whether those projects are useful. Okay. Um, many times you also want to look through uh, projects and ask the faculty to propose something similar that might fit your interests better than the ones that they've already put up. And uh, you know, you can actually also propose your own project. Again, you can find this form. It's not as often used, so we don't have a, a automated form for this. You can print this out, uh, come up with a project, a description of your project, and then find the supervisor that's willing to uh, do it. Okay, so uh, for example, when you negotiate a project, if the, um, the supervisor doesn't have one that's quite set, you can fill out your own and say, you know, does this match your interests? And if they say yes, then you can ask her or him to sign off on that. And then um, our officers, administrative staff will key it into the system. Okay, so the bottom line is really crucial here. All right, uh, I can't say more that uh, you really need to take the initiative to find the best project and mentor that. Uh, interests and advising style, okay? In particular, because every professor is a bit different in the way they like to run projects, it's really, really important to get a good match on advising style. Some professors meet with their students very regularly and that can be onerous or be a, a source of good structure for students. Some other professors are very hands-off, so they'll let you uh, do the project on your own. And then when you have something to report, you could ask them for an appointment, okay? It really varies. Some professors actually advise their students firsthand. Many professors, because they might be busy, um, actually let most of the advising be done by their PhD students. So it really, again, you need to talk with the individual professor. In certain cases, you want to talk to their PhD students or even their current FYP students to get a sense of how their cohort works. Okay. Um, also, I'll say that, you know, because Europe is an 8MC module, it's worth two normal uh, courses. It's not a small chunk of MCs. Okay. So it's actually very important that you do a little bit of window shopping in the sense that you interview with uh, several different professors and try out different projects and then decide. Don't settle for the first project that strikes your fancy. And then after meeting that professor, decide to take it. Okay. It's usually a good idea to interview with at least two or three or even five professors. I mean, it's a big uh, a part of your commitment in SOC to take a year up. So uh, make it worth your while. Okay. Make the match between supervisor and yourself a good one. 
Okay, so I've already shown you the project admin site, uh, just for the sake of having some projects in slides. There are a couple that are, are listed here. Again, what you need to note is that different people propose different projects, like Bimlesh uh, herself, she does a lot of data visualization, um, uh, HCI. Uh, we have uh, people in other places, uh, for example, in um, uh, the information systems and analytics department, uh, Vibob uh, does a little bit of the work um, related to health informatics, okay? Okay, so, uh, you know, Europe is one type of uh, project module. There's another project module that's for year four students that you'll probably end up taking as well, which is FYP, right? So the final year project differs from Europe in a little bit, okay? The key parts that are is that uh, Europe is eight MCs versus 12 MCs, and particularly that Europe is for full year, okay? So what do I mean by full year? That means during the summertime, during the winter break, you are expected to work on your Europe. Okay. Does this mean you cannot take internship? No, not at all. Okay. You have to negotiate that with your supervisor. Most supervisors will say, yeah, it's okay to take uh, an internship, but some may say, you know, this project actually requires your full commitment. I need you to work during the summer to accomplish some of the goals for your year up. Okay, so this is different than FYP. FYP, again, is over two semesters, but it doesn't en en encompass the, the time during the summer, okay? We also tell our faculty that Europe students usually have a little bit less background, okay? But, and a substantially heavier workload because in fourth year, typically we see students clear a lot of their modules and they have less things to work on. Um, so uh, that's a consideration, but because of the CAP requirement, we typically have Europe students who are fairly strong, okay? So uh, Europe is uh, mostly for students who are, are quite um, capable and uh, have already handled the basic modules fairly well. What uh, works out for a lot of supervisors is if they can attract a Europe student and that student uh, finishes their Europe and then continues in the group or in a similar group for FYP, then it's a, a bonus because that student has gotten well-trained in a particular area. Two entire uh, years amounting to almost 20 MCs worth of uh, work in, in, in that particular area. Okay, and it makes it much more likely, especially if you're interested in graduate school, to publish work, you know, cutting edge work, which is, um, you know, a, a very important factor for applications and admissions to graduate schools. Okay, another part of uh, FYP in Europe, uh, actually all of our project modules, is that you get a little bit of uh, support. So um, you can uh, work with your advisor to spend up to $200 of money for certain uh, definitely related expenses to the project. So for example, if you need uh, small amounts of hardware for Internet of Things project, uh, you need to use some cloud resources, or you need to buy licenses for something, or you need to reimburse uh, other peer students when they're doing evaluation for your project. These are all fine and well. Uh, you get to apply for this uh, through a very simple form that your supervisor needs to fill out, okay? So typically, this is something that uh, your supervisor will get reimbursed for, and then you might apply through it through their personal assistant. Okay, so we've uh, compiled some uh, feedback from other uh, previous Europe students. Okay, uh, so you can see their quotations here. I think one of the important parts about Europe that's different from other modules is because it is a research module and it's year long and it's not very well structured. <clears throat> you have to learn a little bit more about how to manage your time, um, acquire research and independent study skills and uh, be able to focus all of that uh, extra energy that you have to accomplishing something great. Okay, so uh, particularly many people like to work towards a, a publication because again, this can help for graduate school applications. Okay. 
So there's some tips as well. Uh, you need to, as I said before, make sure you find a topic that you really like. You do this by doing the window shopping. Um, and uh, again, considering how you broker the time uh, that you have during your year off. If uh, you happen to be a well-structured person, uh, this may not be a, a particular challenge to you, but most of our students find that having homework assignments and other deadlines take precedence over something like your op. So you actually have to do a lot of work to try to reduce that um, you know, year-long project into a series of smaller milestones that can uh, adequately compete with your course module requirements for um, homework assignments and other uh, course projects, okay? All right, a uh, uh, caveat that uh, Fong Yuan uh, gave, uh, I think is also quite important, which is that if you have your own design about what you might want to do for research, make sure that you are uh, carefully considering the ramifications for that. So if you take an open-ended project, which uh, you'll see some of our supervisors are willing to do, it means that you can negotiate with uh, the supervisor, but you really have to take most of the initiative there, okay? So uh, to find such projects where uh, they're open-ended, all you have to do is again, go to the uh, Europe or the FYP website, okay, which I'll show you again, okay? And then you can see some of our uh, supervisors like uh, our, um, this uh, head, okay, uh, in the Department of Information Systems and Analytics, he's open to taking uh, projects that you propose. So you could actually approach him about wh what type of thing you're interested in doing. Okay, and so what you'll need to do is just go through the entire list of projects and then find people who are like open um, to, to new things and ideas that you are interested in. Okay, so there's some quotations uh, from uh, a couple of previous Europe students. You're welcome to go through those. Okay, um, there's some FAQ and issues. If you have questions uh, about that, you can ask us, all right? Uh, but they're, they're all here. They're also on the Europe website. So uh, you can just uh, simply go to um, the Europe website by going to Google and asking about that. So you come and ask Europe and you'll get to uh, the project uh, website. So here, the FAQ, has all of the details for this, okay? And um, the application and the forms are all listed here. Later on, you'll see the uh, briefing as well as the recording also listed on this page, okay? In case some of your friends would like to watch or go through the slides. <laughs> okay. Uh, one particular issue that uh, some people are interested in knowing is whether we can get out of our software engineering requirement for computer science students. And that's true, uh, starting for students from the cohort of 2020, 2021. Uh, so it doesn't apply to most of you uh, in this cohort, uh, unless you happen to be in year one and have sufficient credit uh, already accumulated to take your off. Okay, so that's listed, I think, um, somewhere over here. Yeah, this page over here, um, which you can find by just going um, to the cohort website, okay, which is uh, right over here. Okay, um, that tells you uh, the requirements, uh, and it's only applicable for uh, this most recent cohort at this point. Okay, just a reminder that uh, previously from some of your seniors, you may have heard that Europe has a one semester version. We no longer have that. Okay, um, the one semester version is uh, quite taxing administratively and also doesn't yield particularly good results. It is meant sort of like a uh, consolation version of uh, Europe that we give to, for example, exchange students or students that are 
um, in a bridge, okay? So they, they do Europe for one semester and they continue with the same or similar project for their FYP, okay? We've simplified that process and we ask people to apply for this other module, uh, CP3106 independent project instead of um, the Europe, okay? So this is similar, similar in structure, it's just that the evaluation is entirely due to your supervisor and doesn't need an examiner, okay? Students doing Europe also need to be registered as a year long module. That means they have to do it over two consecutive semesters. Uh, typically, you're not allowed to uh, take leave or go on exchange for that, but that's subject to discussion with your supervisor as well. Okay, so that's actually it for the briefing. Um, there are questions uh, in the remaining slides that you can go over. Um, again, my name is Min. I'm the coordinator for this uh, module. And um, you can turn in all of your forms, mostly online. But if you need to come into the office to submit them, you can come find us at the undergraduate office. Um, uh, Ms. Ang Jaying, who sits um, uh, facing the uh, glass door in the UG office, uh, will be able to help you out with any needs that you have for your op. Okay. Now, remember that applications actually close in April. Uh, so it's good actually, even though you're busy with midterms at this point in time, to try to go ahead and uh, make sure that you apply. Okay, so do the due diligence. Even after you've watched this briefing, you may wanna go uh, uh, browse the website. Okay, one place that you can go if you don't want to look through the project uh, administration site, it's actually to use our, our website itself. Okay, the website is actually uh, now a bit more useful. So if you go to research, okay, and you go to research areas, okay, it's nicely split between the two departments. So if you go to like, say, for example, computer science, and you want to do, let's say, um, programming languages and software engineering that might be aligned to, let's say, your CS specialization, then uh, you can click on this tile and you can see the list of people uh, who work in this area, okay? And all of us have home pages. So if you want to like say, work with uh, Cooldeep, uh, you can take a look at his profile and some of the projects that he's worked on and some publications that are of interest to him, okay? All right, so uh, that's it. Um, again, there are a number of other questions that you can go through. Um, I uh, can answer them again if you have questions. So if you'd like to know, just send us an email and uh, we'll try to go through those questions for you, okay? All right, so uh, that's it for our briefing. So I hope uh, you have a pleasant day ahead and uh, you'll seriously consider taking a drop uh, with our professors and associates.